Hey everyone, welcome back to part 17 of the Dark Souls 2 version 1.0 full playthrough. Sort of, not really a walkthrough. In this section of the playthrough, we are going to go through Aldia's Keep. Aldia's Keep had some changes in Scholar of the First Sin, uh, which we'll talk about when we get there, but it's basically the doorway to the Dragon Shrine and the Dragon Airy. So it is a, sort of the beginning of the end for the game. So a little bit more uh, linear play, and then it'll sort of open it up for one last time, and then the game ends. Okay, so my stats are level 123, soul memory of 1.16 million, 50 vigor, 35 endurance, 18 vitality, 4 attunement, 20 strength, 22 dex, 18 adaptability, 3 intelligence, 6 faith, and I'm using a Saint Tier Spear plus 4. Hopefully we can upgrade that to plus 5 soon and be done with it. Okay, so in order to access Aldia's Keep, you need to have the King's Ring, which you get from Vendrick's armor set, or like his armor on the ground in the uh, the Undead Crypt. So we did that last time. All right. Let us travel, and we want to go to the Shaded Woods. And we want to go to the Ruined Fork Road Bonfire. You know, Aldius Keep is interesting in that, if I'm not mistaken, Aldia never appears there. <laughs> so Aldia is an NPC. Uh, it's Vendrick's brother. It's the king's brother. Aldia, although he is spoken about a good deal in item descriptions and in the game, uh, he never appears. But they uh, they brought him into the fold properly in Scholar of the First Sin, although he was a bit of a letdown. Um, it didn't make a ton of sense uh, the way they handled him. It felt pretty disappointing, if I'm being honest. Um, but yeah. In any event, make sure you have the King's Ring equipped, and then you'll be able to open this door. So this door automatically opens when you have the King's Ring equipped. It says produce a symbol of the King. Once you do, it opens up. And then once the door is open, you can take off the King's Ring and replace it with whatever you had. Welcome to Aldius Keep. Okay. Cool. So, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to activate a bonfire. And this bonfire is over here. And be careful because there's some rats around. But, in any event, Lugatil of Mira is here. So we can speak with her one last time. She doesn't remember us at first, but then she asks us how things are going. She reintroduces herself as Lucatiel, and that's the end of the quest line. This would go a little bit further if you had um, successfully had her survive three boss fights that you summon her for. However, it's very difficult to do in 1.0. It's actually kind of hard to do in Scholar as well. The NPC summon AI in 1.0 is awful. Most every summon will just stare at the boss and not do anything. I've exemplified it a few times in this playthrough. It just happens. Um, in Scholar, they're a little bit better, and they do more damage and have higher health, but they kind of suffer from the same problems. Now, the interesting thing here is that Lucatiel is no longer wearing her mask, and I want to see if I could pull up this comment... Um, okay, so Daniel Escovedo two weeks ago commented on my uh, Scholar of the First Sin playthroughs and said that it's not that her mask is glitched, but rather she takes it off during the dialogue. When she tells you about the undead curse, she shows part of her face is hollow. So that is when you find her in the Lost Bastille Sinner and Sinner's Rise. Um, and so she just doesn't have it on here at all. So that mark on her face face is actually her go going hollow. So thank you very much, Daniel, for that uh, piece of information. I really did not know that. 
Okay, so upon resting, Lucatil goes away. And But if you had her survive the three boss fights, uh, I think you would actually get her armor set. Okay, so there's a couple of rats here. These guys stack bleed and petrification. They are just awful. Jesus. They're not even rats. They're like little like monkey things. I don't know. You get an alluring skull. I'll grab this treasure. And then in Scholar, I actually died to a mimic here. Yeah. There's a chest in the back. Being honest, I don't know if it's still a mimic. Yeah, it has buckles. Alright. You don't want to just wail on it because it kind of explodes out and you can and will take damage from that. Alright. But you get the Sunset Staff and the Dark Mask. Alright. So with that out of the way, it's time to uh, enter Aldia's Keep. Don't forget about this corpse in the water here. Let's have a Radiant Life Gem. I think I might have a few of those now. All right. I just want to see something. There's 63%. Cool. Maybe I can even go a little bit higher. No, that's 72. 75. Okay, all good. So now we kind of look like the dude on the cover a little bit. When we enter this room, you'll see a shaking cart and... We're going to get invaded by Azlatiel of Mira, who looks a lot like Lucatiel of Mira. This is her brother that she spoke of when we first met her. So her brother is here, and if you remember, she said that she's here in this world looking for her brother. So she was either really close, or maybe she found his corpse, and that's why she might have lost her purpose. A little unclear in that respect, but this is her brother. Okay, so you kill Azlatiel. He's vanquished. This cart is shaking. It's supposed to be like, hey, there's a creature inside. Unfortunately, you can't do anything. Like, you can never break it. It never pops open. Nothing. And uh, that may actually be the same exact cart from the original Demon Souls in uh, level 1 3. All right. So. In 1.0, this dragon does this. I just want to back up. Now, I believe in Scholar, that happens a little differently. But out pops a basilisk from the cart that it blew up. And you get a fading soul. Now, there's a really important NPC around here. You can actually hear it. This, like, low, dull roar. So this NPC is... Oh, my God. I forget his name. Royal Sorcerer Navlan? Yeah, it's definitely Navlan, but I'm not sure if it's Royal Sorcerer or not. Sinners Rise, Shrine of Winter, Drain Lake Castle. I'm flipping through the book right now, okay. Aldi's Keep. Royal Sorcerer Navlan. Am I good or am I good? So Royal Sorcerer Navlan is this game's assassin. Um, so if you've played Demon Souls, you should be familiar with Mephistopheles. She's kind of hidden. Only shows up if you have pure black character tendency. Uh, but in Dark Souls 1, Law Trek the Embraced is, um, or Law Trek of Kareem, is sort of the assassin. There's no real assassination quest line in Dark Souls 1. Um, but in Dark Souls 2, this NPC starts the assassination quest line. In Dark Souls 2, though, or in Dark Souls 2's 
version of the assassination quest line, you don't actually have to kill anyone. Navlan will ask you for tokens. So it kind of takes from the Mephistopheles quest line of Demon Souls in that Mephistopheles wants the tokens uh, showing that you've successfully killed the person. However, in Dark Souls 2, there are other ways to get those tokens, either by purchasing them from the NPCs themselves, such as Laddersmith Gilligan, who I believe is the first uh, assassination target. You can just purchase the miniature ladder from him for, I think, 7,000 souls or $69.99 and uh, show it to Navlan, and he'll think that you killed him. So there are ways to get each token, and then after finishing the quest line, uh, I think Navlan gets released into the world, or you can release him into the world early by pulling on the lever down this hallway. And these are NP. Uh, these are developer messages. So we're playing 1.0. We are offline. Yet there are all these developer hints here, telling you to pull back. And they're a little cheeky because you can either pull back the lever, or it's telling you to leave. It says, "Don't you dare." So if you pull that lever, it releases Navland from his prison. And his way of thanking you is invading you several times throughout the rest of the game. So don't do it. Unless you want to. But I wouldn't recommend. All right, so that's Navlan. Okay. So I mentioned when we were in Drang Lake Castle that the Looking Glass Knight, or as I refer to it, the Mirror Knight, uh, the mirrors would come in handy again. Why do I feel like this is booby-trapped? Okay. Great magic barrier. Which makes sense because Navlan is being imprisoned by what is likely a great magic barrier. So I said that these mirrors would come in handy again, and here they are. So enemies will break out. These guys have a little bit more health than last time. Let's try not to get too close to the other mirrors. the enemies. Now, I don't believe there's like one in every single one. Yep. I mean, no backstab. Okay. It's fine, I guess. There we go. Cool. All right, we get the Northern Ritual Band plus two and the Petrified Dragon Bone. And of course that aggro's this guy. It's weird, it like doesn't want to do a backstab. <laughs> Whatever. Okie doke. So that's that. And then we can go this way. We can go up the stairs. So you've got a gigantic basilisk here. It's guarding a treasure. It's in a big bird cage, but isn't really doing anything. So we can kill it. Watch out for the tail swipe.
All these keep, unfortunately, it's pretty empty. There's not a lot going on here. All these keep as part of the original gameplay reveal of, De of uh, Dark Souls 2. And it looked a lot better. Um, again, that whole lighting engine was still implemented. Um, the game looked evil, which I really dug. Um, but unfortunately, in the full release, things were a bit different. If that's why we came, we come over here. And then there is an ogre here. However, you need to use a fragrant branch of yore to move it. So what this is effectively doing is it's allowing you to uh, like gain access to this floor more easily, but you don't really have to worry about that because you could just run up the other set of stairs. How many fragrant branches of yore do I have though? Three. I'm gonna leave that one for now because I do believe that there are other enemies here that require fragrant branches of yore. Alright, so if we pull this, closes that door, and opens this one. Alright, so this is a hallway, and that's really all Aldia's Keep is, is a hallway. Um, but you'll notice that there are some enemies in cages, and then there are also uh, Pharos Lockstone slots. I don't recommend uh, using those just yet. However, there is an enemy behind here. It's like a little scientist, dude. Okay. Now, the dudes in the cages, as long as the lights are off, really shouldn't notice you. Come in here. And then you just kind of got like a destructible environment moment. There is an item behind this one, though. Okay, you got a Ferris Lockstone. But most importantly is right here. This is an illusory wall. And inside is the bonfire within Aldia's Keep. So, down here we have a gigantic acid pit. And what we want to do is we want to basically like kite out these dog things. I'm gonna try to use throwing knives. I'm gonna kite out the dogs. I don't know if these things can be poison. Yep, they can. I'm gonna kite out the dogs, and then there is a key inside this pit, although that may be a scholar treasure. It may not be here in this version of the game. I think it is. Yo, what just hit me, dude? That shit was happening in... <sighs> that shit was happening in uh, the gutter. I don't know what these things' problem is. They don't like me. Oh, it's their hand? I guess. Anyway, so this uh, pit, I'm actually gonna write down the rings that I'm using because <laughs> I can never remember. Chloranthi. Steel protection, blades, thorns. All right, so what you wanna do is you wanna take off your gear. Anything that can degrade, you wanna remove. Santier spear cannot degrade. And then you wanna just come in here and grab the treasures. The Aldia key is what you're looking for. I believe that got moved in Scholar. All right, and then once you're done, you want to put your gear back on.
We're at the steel protection. And then my shield. You know what? <laughs> Doesn't matter. It's going to say screw that and let's just equip the full set, but doesn't matter. Okay. So you have a choice. Uh, you can arrest at the bonfire, which we're going to do just because we haven't done anything on this level yet. Get your stuff back. Two, three, four, five, six souls. That's nice. That's a nice number. Okay. So... Yep, hello. We're always behind the damn paintings. Alright, so in this room, you can use the Aldia key to enter. And there's going to be a bunch of these little guys in here. And there's a real big beetle. Throw magic urns, I guess. That took too long to get. So we have a beetle. And if I'm not mistaken, there's a slot for a Ferris Lockstone in this room. And it, like, drops something with an item on it. Or is that a Scholar thing? Maybe that's a different room? Maybe that's a different room. Yeah, I could have sworn it, like, lowered a slab. Okay. So, this guy is standing in front of a door. And, I like, if you don't have the Aldia key, then you will have to wait for this guy to break that door open. We're going to see it again in a little... Actually... Actually... Do we need to kite this one? I think we do. Yes, we do. Okay. So this door is locked and can only be opened by that ogre. I'm glad I took a second to think about that. I don't know if this guy can open this. The reason I'm doing this is because the ogre can 110% open this and bust this guy out, and I don't want to have to fight both. I don't know, the second one didn't hit me. Okay. Cool, so what we're gonna do... Come in here. Jesus. Kill this scientist. And then if you look down, that's the acid pit. We already did that, so we don't have to worry about it. But Aldia was doing something to the giants and sort of like feeding them down into this thing. I 
All right. So now what we're going to do is all you got to do is just walk in front of it, and then the ogre busts through. I'm going to get him to open this cage. Thank you. So I can get that item. Kite him over here. This way you can get him to bust open this door. I don't know where this basilisk came from. Oh, God. Come on. Now we can kill him. This wall will replenish. So you need to kill this guy now. I really thought I was about to get grabbed. I'm not getting greedy. Cool. Okay. Inside this chest... have the malformed shell, which I believe is armor. Or is it a shield? It's a shield. This moved. Malformed shell, DS2. It's a weapon. This. One of the malformed weapons developed in Aldia. In Aldia, not by Aldia. That's strange. Swung like a great hammer. Appears to be a fragment of a giant shell, but its precise origins are unknown. The peculiar figure known as Lord Aldi attempted to uncover the secrets of life itself and viewed the undead as a key to this mystery. Okay. Chaos shield. This castle is a creature of chaos. I really could have sworn that there was a slot for a, a stone here. I'm a little confused. I guess that's a scholar thing. Hmm. Or is there another room over here? Nope, just that one. And that one turns the lights on. All right, I'm not turning the lights on because all it does is drop that ogre. And I don't know. I don't feel like dealing with it. All right, so we're done with all these keep, and now we're going to fight the boss. And the boss is the red dragon. Is there another ogre in here? Yeah. Never mind, we're not done. Almost positive. Yep, there he is. There you go. 
Yeah. Now my Ring of Thorns took care of that. All right. Okay, now we're done. <laughs> now it's time for the dragon boss. So we've got this big old bird cage out here, and the landscape looks very different for some reason, even though there's never a hint that it would ever look like this. Like, nothing is visible from here, even though you have a gigantic landscape. Like, no Huntsman's Cops, not Majula, not Hyde's Tower of Flame, nothing. Nothing is viewable from here. It doesn't make any sense. Okay, so the red dragon, or the guardian dragon, is this. This boss is actually quite interesting. It has some really cool attacks, and it also has the ability... Oh, that was dumb. I was trying to chase its tail. Yeah, the breath is a double hit. It has the ability to, like go on to the has the ability to, to get onto the walls just like that and when it does that it's going to try to lay fire down so like it uses the environment on its own which I think is cool like it's unique for bosses to do that not I don't really know other bosses that use the environment like that oh my fucking god I might be dead Yep. All right, we'll try again. So unfortunately, with all these keep, um, fortunately and unfortunately, it's small. So you just gotta run through that hallway. Um, yeah. That, that's why I call this place the door to the dragon, Airy, because it's just nothing. It's a few rooms and a boss. Try it again. So you want to try to get good. Oh. You want to try to get good at fighting these things because you're going to end up killing a few of them. This is one of those bosses that just turns into a regular enemy, which in video games is like one of my favorite things. Like I don't know why that just always feels good. That's the Guardian Dragon. So again, not that hard. Oh shit, which way's the exit? Okay. So you get the Guardian Dragon soul, whole bunch of souls, and then you gain access to an elevator. This elevator is gonna take us into the sky. Always look behind you. <sighs> so again, this is one of those moments of Dark Souls 2 where it's like, wow, that's beautiful, but this doesn't make any sense. Like, nothing is viewable here. 
I, I don't I don't get it. And even if you were to look up from there, you would not see what what we're about to see. And it's one thing for elevators to mask loading screens. I think that's fine. You do what you got to do. But I don't know. This always just felt egregious to me. I do like the sound, though. I like that it just sounds windy, but you come to realize, oh, shit, it's actually dragons flapping their wings. <laughs> like It's pretty cool. All right. So, the maiden in green is here to greet us. And she says that uh, she's been waiting for somebody to set her free. And we will learn really why she's been here a little, little later on. Okay, so the item she gives us is the, is the aged feather, which is an infinite use homeward bone. So really, really good item. And it's something that I'm really glad they have brought forward into uh, the other Souls games. Particularly Dark Souls 3 had the coiled sword fragment, which allowed, which was the same thing. And it's something you got a little late. Um, I like it. It makes like end game play uh, easier and more enjoyable. Um, yeah, so I like it. Okay, so we're going to rest at the bonfire here. And then we will tackle the Dragon Airy next time. as flash shards or anything. Oh, you know what we can do? Okay, since we have the King's Ring, uh, Shanalot, not Shanalot, that's an NPC we haven't technically met yet, um, Chloan, her inventory gets upgraded. Speak. So, we can now buy Twinkling Titanite from her. And, if we spend 20,000 souls with her, she will give us an extra one. So you can spend 20,000 on whatever you want, but after 20,000, she will give you one Twinkling Titanite. So what I'm going to do, is I'm going to crack open some souls. Yeah, it should be fine. Perfect. All right, and then we can reinforce this one last time, the Saint Tier Spear. Bada bing. Okay, now we have a plus five weapon. Or a fully upgraded Saint Tier Spear. So it only goes to plus five, but still very, very helpful. Okay. So we're only at 63. Can we start wearing other stuff? What about the boots? I feel like the boots would provide us a bit more. No. Oh, damn. All good. By the end of this game, we're going to be able to wear the whole thing. <laughs> okay. Uh, can we get one more level with the souls that we cracked open? You know what we should do? We should crack open all of our souls and just do this now. Yeah, I always like forget to do this.
I'll leave the boss souls just because you know, I'm never going to use them, but it's always nice to have them. I guess we should do it this way. We're getting near the end, so we're going to get the most benefit out of this now. This was another uh, great quality of life improvement in Dark Souls 2, was being able to use multiple souls. In Dark Souls 1 and Demon Souls, you could not do this. You had to go one by one. So what you were better off doing was putting it on your quick bar and just mashing square. And then in Sekiro, they made it so you could sell coin purses, and then in Elden Ring they made it so you could sell souls, or sell runes. I might have just wasted a stat. I have no idea what the soft cap of, uh, of that is. Alright. Full Faram set. With a quick roll. Great. Okay. So, that's it for now. Uh, that's it for all these keep. We've made it to the dragon area, which, like I said, is the beginning of the end. So, in the next section, we're going to do the dragon area as well as the dragon shrine. The dragon shrine is just a short little area. There is a boss in the dragon shrine. It is optional. However, we're going to do it. Um, it is a tough boss. It's one that often gets people in a lot of trouble. So, what I recommend doing is when you reach that boss talk to it first like be friendly to it and then get the key item that it's going to give you and then go after the boss this way in case you like are having a hard time against it you can still continue on with the game and you're not hard stuck if you attack it before you talk to it then the key item is locked behind its death i'm not sure if you can pray for absolution uh, and get the uh, the boss to be friendly to you again i'm not sure if that works it probably would but that'll cost you a lot of souls at this point in the game but that's it Okay, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment. I'll do my best to help you out. If you're looking for more guides for Dark Souls 2 version 1.0, please subscribe to the channel so you get alerted when new guides go live. If you're interested in supporting the channel monetarily, please consider becoming a channel member by clicking the blue join button below this video. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter and join my Discord. The links for those are in the description below. As always, I'll be Johnny Cage. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.